What's up everybody, Super Dorks fan here, and uh, another uh, little update on the Mini. I know I just filmed an update, uh, you know, on Thursday that posted yesterday, and uh, the Mini came back, you know, from the water pump service, and was all good. And then uh, yesterday, I was uh, driving to work in sixth gear on the highway, about 65 miles an hour, and decided to try and pass someone with full throttle, and noticed that the uh, RPMs were going up but the speed wasn't increasing. It was slipping. It was just briefly, but it was slipping. And then I tried it again and it slipped again. And then I tried it a few more times and it didn't slip those times. So it doesn't happen all the time, but my clutch, I think, is definitely starting to go. Uh, like I said, I don't know. I could probably drive it for a little, you know, for a while longer before it actually just totally goes kaput. But uh, not sure, you know, really what to do at this point. Um, and the big thing is the clutch isn't covered under the warranty. That's one of the, like, two things that isn't covered under this elaborate warranty that I bought, of course, because you could take it to the drag strip and just, you know, destroy the clutch, and they don't want to cover that. So, I mean, it's reasonable for the warranty to not cover that, but that just means that it's on me, which sucks, because all the other repairs so far have just been inconveniences. They've all been covered under warranty, haven't had to pay anything. So now that this is coming up, and it's going to be a big thing, uh, because... Mini jobs, I think for clutches, it's from what I've heard about 2,000 bucks for everything, including labor. Um, I found the clutch kit, I can get it for 350 bucks, uh, but normally, I mean, sometimes you have to replace the flywheel as well, which is 750 bucks, but they don't know whether or not the flywheel is um, savable or if it needs to be replaced until they have everything opened up, and then you know. And so, that makes it kind of hard, so I just kind of have to assume the worst and assume that I would probably have to replace the flywheel, which is generally advised, I think, anyway, whenever you're doing the clutch. Um, so we're talking about basically $1,100 before labor. And uh, mini labor isn't cheap. Even if I got it done at an independent shop, I'm sure I would still, it would still be a $1,500 to $2,000 job, no matter which way I cut it. Um, and I don't have the skill to do it myself and uh, don't know any mini mechanics to do it for me for free or anything for a case of beer or something. So, uh, basically screwed as far as that goes, and, I mean, if I, you know, looked at the Mini and said, this car is really going to be a good car, it's going to last me for a while, and this is just one thing that needs done, then that would be one thing. Um, but it's just one problem after another, and it's not like this car has really high miles. It has 57,000 miles on it, and so far, it's overheated because the thermostat housing was broken. It's, uh, you know, and it's left me stranded there, uh, basically, and so it's overheated, the water pumps failed, the, uh, you know, and a minor thing, that little turbo uh, boost hose popped off, I said to put it back on, and now the clutch is starting to go at 57,000 miles. My Legacy GT that I had, I bought it with 15,000, and I sold it at 88,000. I put over 70,000 miles on my Legacy GT, and I even took it to the drag strip one night and was doing hard launches and stuff, and it still was holding strong at 88,000 miles. Um, so maybe I'm just used to Japanese cars' reliability, and uh, so that's another thing that's kind of disappointed me about the Mini. I know, Consumer Reports rated the Mini horribly. Many of you said the Mini is a bad car, it's unreliable. The reason I bought the Mini, I'll reiterate it again since a lot of people still are kind of confused, is because it was a fun and unique little car. I've always kind of wanted a Mini. Um, it got good gas mileage, like the BRZ, that was a big uh, selling point for me. And it's just different. You know, the Civic SIs and the Golf GTIs, things like that, they're fun, they're enjoyable cars. I've, you know, talked all about how I love the VTEX and the RSX and all that kind of stuff in my reviews. They are tons and tons of fun, and I would be happy with one. Uh, the thing is, though, they just they don't really look that out of the ordinary. You know, the Civic Si blends in with every other Civic on the road, and there's millions of them around here. So I just like something a little bit more unique. I don't have to be shouty or anything, but just something that's a little different. Um, and so, like I said, nothing against Honda or, you know, Volkswagen GTI owners or anything like that. It's just, it's a little bit, I just want something a little more unique. Um, and so that's why I got the Mini, and uh, I also kind of wanted to see, because I've heard mixed things. You know, some people say the Mini's good, some people say they never have any issues, other people say they're lemons. And so I wanted to find out for myself and document it for you guys, so that, you know, you would know definitively, based on my experiences, whether or not it's a car worth owning. And uh, my conclusion is starting to be that it's not a car worth owning, and yes, it's it has, you know, charms and things about it that I like, but... At the end of the day, as, a, as my only car and a daily driver that I drive a lot, I need something reliable, dependable, and 
Um, my patience is wearing thin and um, especially, you know, I bought the Mini to save money. If I have to dump $2,000 into it on a clutch, you know, what am I really saving? And um, so, you know, it just, it sucks the way timing's worked out with things this year because if I had had two or three months of car payments on the BRZ covered, I probably would have been able to make it through the really rough spot earlier this year and would have been able to keep the BRZ. Um, so that leads to another question you might have is why don't I just go back and buy another BRZ? Well, um, mostly because there's not a whole lot out there, um, and they're still kind of on the expensive side. And also, I've already owned one. I enjoyed it, uh, but now that I've had the Mini and I've had torque again, I realized how much I missed the power, and the BRZ did not have torque. And it was a little frustrating to drive at times in daily driving situations, because it just did not have the power that you needed in normal daily driving sometimes. And so... Um, if I was going to spend BRZ money, I could use BRZ money, I'm talking low, low $20,000, I would probably get a Fiesta ST, which is something I'm strongly considering. Um, strongly considering getting one. They're very hard to find used, uh, or I could save a couple thousand that way, um, but I could just get a brand new one. Um, you know, you can get it without the Recaros for like 22000 bucks with a moonroof still, and um, that would be something that would be probably pretty doable. Um, I know another question, why not just get a WRX? Well, it's so hard to find a nice WRX. It's I've been searching over the past 24 hours. I've been all over Craigslist, Auto Trader, dealer websites, um, eBay Motors, all of that. There's nothing. Um, and you know, I mean, even Nazioc. It's really kind of tough because everyone modifies them. Like there was a nice blue one that one of you actually posted up on Facebook for me, and. Um, it's nice, except it has, you know, Megan Racing coilovers and an exhaust that's probably too loud, and I don't want a rough ride of coilover suspension and stuff, and going back and fixing everything and making it stock again is just a pain. And, uh, you know, normally modified cars tend to be driven pretty hard. I mean, I drive my car cars hard, so I can't really complain, but I, it's just really hard to find a nice, clean, stock, or very, very mildly modified one um, that's low miles for a decent price because they either have super high miles and they all hold their value really well. I'm not going to pay, you know, $20,000 for a car that was 30000 eight years ago. Like the STIs don't appreciate. It's insane. And so there's really no good deals to be had. Um, and that's really the thing that I'm not going to pay for a car that's that old. I'm not going to pay that much. Whenever I could buy a brand new Fiesta ST for 22 why would I buy a 2011 WRX for the same price as a 2015 Fiesta ST? To me, it's just, I love the WRX. I'm a WRX fan, um, but uh, to me, it's just, the, there's not a, it's not a good value unless you buy it brand new. If you buy it brand new and you get that rock solid, you know, zero depreciation, then you're set. Um, and uh, so, you know, as many of you guys know, the car that I've really, really wanted for a while now is the 2015 Mustang. I love them. I've always wanted a Mustang. You know, we did that contest and, you know, all you guys voted and shared the video of my contest entry to with BET to, uh, you know, hopefully win the Mustang and I ended up losing uh, that. So, uh, you know, I made it into the top five, but I did not um, actually win the car, obviously. And uh, that sucked. But I mean, so many of you guys know I've been wanting a Mustang for a long time. Um, and I've been looking at, you know, getting an EcoBoost one. Um, I know, you know, I've just talked in the weekly update yesterday about the fake engine sound. It's not really fake, and I, you can go back and watch that video to hear my explanation, and that doesn't bother me. Um, and another thing about the EcoBoost is, you know, obviously, yes, I would like to have a GT. I would like to, you know, have the V8 sound and the power and all that kind of stuff, but those are luxuries, and they're expensive luxuries. Uh, a GT that's equipped the same way as the EcoBoost one that I'm, you know, kind of building on the Ford site, it's 7000 more for the GT. Uh, and on top of that, uh, you know, you obviously are going to have much higher fuel costs, uh, insurance is going to be a lot more for the GT, and, um, you know, for those reasons, it's just, it's not the financially responsible thing for me to do. I could possibly swing it, but um, as a lot of you guys know, especially if you watch the live streams and I talk more about my personal life and those, um, I'm still living with my parents. I want to get my own place. So if I'm dropping all this money and spending all this money, I can't save anything for a down payment for a house or, you know, something like that or for an apartment, condo, whatever. Um, and so I just kind of need to grow up and all, do all that kind of stuff as well. And so, you know, I don't want to just be living with my parents and being 25, 30 and, you know, have a sweet car but living in the same bedroom I've been in since I was 11 years old. So, um... For me, I think the EcoBoost is probably the one that makes the most sense. 
Um, but I know a lot of you would, you know, throw up your arms and say, no, you should have got the V8. A Mustang isn't proper with the Turbo 4. Um, I think the Turbo 4 is a really good, you know, value all around. Um, so some of you have suggested on Facebook and Instagram, something like that, that I should do a Kickstarter or something like that and uh, ask you guys, you know, for the funds to help me get a Mustang GT and, you know, just do it that way. Um, uh, the thing about that is, you know, I know it's worked. Like regular car reviews, um, they you know, had an accident and needed a new car and they just asked for 5,000 bucks for a cheap little, you know, car just to do their road trips so they could film more uh, reviews and uh, they got $18,000 and so they're kind of a success story of how this can work um, in the car realm here and um, it's something that, you know, I've thought about. Uh, it's just that for me, aside from the $2,500, you know, Subaru Impreza Outback Sport that was handed down to me as my first car, I've always worked for all of my cars and I've always bought them myself and, you know, just financed them, but I've, you know, paid them and, and just done it that way. And uh, so asking you guys for money still, you know, would be something that I would be uncomfortable with, I think. Um, but I know a lot of you said, please just let us do this. And um, so, you know, I don't know. That's why what I'm doing is I'm going to set up a straw poll and uh, the link is in the description. And I want you guys all to vote and just be totally honest and let me know, you know, whether you would vote, you know, whether you think that it's not cool for me to even accept any kind of funds. Um, and just let me know, you know, there's three different options there. And please let me know what you think. If we have a really, really strong response of people that say, yes, we want to do this, let's hook you up and, you know, get a sweet Mustang GT, um, you know, then maybe, you know, we would actually go through with that. Um, because, I mean, you know, you guys would benefit. You know, a lot of you have said you're not really interested in the Mini. It's not very exciting, you know, to hear about. And obviously a Mustang GT would, you know, give me that excitement. Even a standard, you know, EcoBoost would too. But uh, especially the GT. I mean, you guys saw my review of uh, that dude in blue's uh, 2013 Mustang GT. And I also, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw the little teaser. that I, uh, this past week, reviewed a 2013 Boss 302 Mustang. I'll just say my reactions were pretty hilarious and embarrassing. Uh, that'll be going up probably in about two weeks. Sorry to make you wait so long. I still don't have time to edit. Um, so, but yeah, I, I love them. I've always loved them. Um, I've also emailed Ford, reaching out to their uh, press car fleet guys, because a lot of these, you know, long-term test cars that, you know, Motor Trend and all these kind of magazines have, they write about their experiences maybe once a month or once every quarter in some of them. Uh, they don't even talk, they, you know, write a little few paragraphs four times a year and they get a free car to drive around all year and it's something sweet. It's normally not a cheap car. It's, you know, something really nice. And so, uh, you know, I feel like there could be more value for a car manufacturer to say, here's a car, you can do weekly updates on it and give, you know, my honest opinion of what it's like and you know I think that would also be a value to uh, some car co company so uh, you know and if any other car companies watching this is in, and is interested in working out something I would love to you know do a Fiesta ST or you know I'm open to a bunch of other performance oriented cars that I know you guys would be interested in and uh, make something happen here but uh, yeah so uh, let me know what you think like I said please vote on the straw poll and let me know what you think I should do about the mini and everything I just honestly I'm not really totally sure and I need your opinions and I really value what you guys have to say so please leave your comments below and uh, yeah I'll keep you posted on uh, what ends up happening here but uh, <laughs> definitely not an ideal situation.